ever felt frustrated when you've wanted to learn the positioning of the leads? Or maybe you've tried remembering the leads through various methods but with no success? If your answer is either yes or no, in the next few minutes I will explain to you through our 3D animation how the 12 leads see the heart. If you want to have all the content from this video as an interactive experience, check our app 3D ECG Leads on the App Store. If you've ever tried to imagine the leads in 3D with no success, this traditional illustration will be the reason why. This is the heart pictured in the Valentine's position, which is an incorrect anatomical representation, as it is not how the heart is orientated in our body. This orientation results from the examination of the heart outside of the body in the autopsy room. If we want to visualise and understand the leads correctly, first we need to view the heart in its anatomical position. Therefore, we have to see how it sits in the chest. To do this, we will go to the leads projection overview. We will swap the model to the secondary view for ease of this demonstration. So, if we look at the 3D model, we can see that we have this content located in the centre of the thorax. This is known as the mediastinum. Here, in the lower part of the mediastinum, what you see is the pericardial sac. The pericardial sac is the membrane that encloses the heart, so the heart is situated right here, within the sac. If we switch back to the primary view, we can see that the heart is orientated obliquely in the chest, with its tip, known as the apex, tilted towards the left, and the right ventricle towards the sternum. If we turn the heart in the Valentine's position and switch to the secondary view, we can see how much the body has moved from its anatomical position. This is why it's not a good idea to learn the heart in the Valentine's position. It just generates a whole lot of confusion. Now that we know how to look at a heart correctly, we can take a look at the leads. These leads are more detailed and complex, but for now, the most important fact that we need to remember is that their purpose is to view the heart from different angles. An easy way to envisage this is imagining them to be cameras. Another point to remember is that they are organised into two planes, a horizontal plane and a vertical plane. This way, they are able to generate a 3D map of the heart. We will now take a more detailed look into the leads that are in the vertical plane. To begin with, their names are lead AVR, lead AVL, lead 1, lead 2, lead AVF and lead 3. These are known as the frontal leads. The leads that are in the horizontal plane are named lead V1, lead V2, lead V3, lead V4, lead V5 and lead V6. These are known as the precordial leads. Looking closer at the frontal leads and focusing on lead 2, we can see it has an orientation. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this orientation. If we were to draw a horizontal line here at the same level with lead 1 and then measure the angle created by what we've just drawn here, you can see that the angle is approximately 60 degrees and is below the horizontal line. For another example, we shall look at lead AVR. I'm going to make another angle with the horizontal line and you can see that instead of 60 degrees, we have a 150 degree angle which is above the horizontal line. Let's do the same for AVL. We can see that it forms roughly a 30 degree angle above the horizontal line. Taking lead 1, we can see that it has 0 degrees at the same level with the horizontal line. Taking AVF, we can see that it is at 90 degrees below the horizontal line. Finally, taking lead 3, we can see that it is at 120 degrees below the horizontal line. If we say that all the leads that are orientated above this line have a negative sign and all the leads that are below the horizontal line have a positive sign, then we will have AVR at minus 150 degrees, AVL at minus 30 degrees, lead 1 at 0 degrees, lead 2 at plus 60 degrees, lead AVF at plus 90 degrees and lead 3 at plus 120 degrees. What you've just seen in regards to the orientation of the frontal leads is how we get the hexaxial reference system. The hexaxial reference system is a reference system that is illustrated as a 360 degree circle that surrounds the heart. This circle is divided by the frontal leads into 12 segments, 
each representing 30 degrees and all the frontal leads. This system is vitally important because it is used to determine the cardiac axes in frontal plane. Now that we are familiarised with the frontal leads, let's look at the precordial leads. The precordial leads have their ID formed by a letter followed by a number. The letter is V and the numbers are from 1 to 6. All of these perspectives, in most cases, will be printed on a piece of paper that is known as the 12 lead ECG tracing. You might ask yourself, well, why do we need all these leads? They actually are really useful in diagnosing a lot of diseases, but as we will see in the next few minutes, these leads are also extremely helpful when diagnosing a myocardial infarction, also known as MI. To have a better view of what a myocardial infarction is, let's head over to the website www.3decgleads.com. If we click on the first image on the home page, it will take us to a 3D model that shows us the heart with the coronary arteries. The coronary arteries are the arteries that supply the heart's muscle, also known as the myocardium, with blood. Here they are these vessels shown in red. As you can see here, different arteries supply blood to different parts of the myocardium. For example, this one here supplies this part here, this one here supplies this part here, and this one here supplies this part here, and so forth. If we would block this artery in this spot, no blood would be able to flow beyond the blockage and the myocardium supplied by it would become what we call infarcted. If this problem is not addressed immediately, that infarcted muscle will die, or as we say, become necrotic. Now, the great thing about the 12 lead ECG is not only does it identify the myocardial infarction, it can also tell us where it is located. So, if we look back at the model, as you can see, it is located just in front of lead V3 and lead V4. What is important to know is that when part of the myocardium is infarcted, it will generate a specific electrical signal. These particular leads will then receive different electrical signals when compared to the other leads. Therefore, a different wave pattern will be recorded by these leads. So let's head back to the app to have a better look at how these leads are grouped based on this very concept. So based on this concept, the leads could be grouped into the following. The septal leads, which are V1 and V2, which reflect changes seen in the septal wall. The anterior leads, that are V3 and V4, which usually see changes in the apex of the heart. The lateral leads, which are 1, AVL, V5 and V6, which usually reflect changes in the lateral wall. And finally, the inferior leads, which are leads 3, AVF and 2, and these reflect changes usually in the inferior wall. So, to conclude, I'm going to summarise the importance of these ECG leads. Number 1. The frontal leads are very important in the visualisation of the frontal cardiac axes. Number 2. The leads are grouped into two planes, a horizontal plane and a vertical plane. We also know that the electrical signals that they read are recorded on paper. And number three, one of their life-saving features is that they can be grouped based on the region of the heart that they see. Thank you for watching and don't forget, if you liked our video and feel that a 3D 12 lead ECG pocket reference would help you, just follow the link below and get our app from the App Store. If you would like to see more future 3D medical videos, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. And finally, if you would like to stay updated with all our latest products and offers, subscribe to our page www.3decgleads.com.